Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. Welcome back to Real Estate Coaching Radio. First of all, I would like to thank, as I like to do on every radio show, all of our loyal listeners. Um, You know, we've more than doubled the number of listens this month so far than we did last month. So the radio show itself is really growing at a rate that, frankly, makes me very happy, makes me very encouraged and motivated. Um, And, guys, here's a thought for you. It's because of you. All you guys are sharing the radio show. You're retweeting it. You're, You're emailing to other agents. We're hearing from agents now from all over the country and parts of the world where, you know, frankly, I didn't even know we'd have influence, and we are able to get the word out about how to be successful in real estate. You know, I think it's interesting to me what Julie and I say on this radio show and, and what we, you know, when we're doing interviews, and we've got a whole bunch of interviews scheduled in the next couple of weeks, by the way, uh, what resonates with you guys. So there's a whole bunch of ideas that are thrown around. People are saying different things and, you know, different opinions and all that good stuff, especially when we're doing the interviews. But the stuff that sticks is what I pay attention to. And one of the things that I know resonates with a lot of you, and I'm, I honestly am thrilled that it does, is the fact that you realize that real estate is a people-helping business. I mean, there's this been for a long time this sort of ethos, and I think it's un, honestly, I think it's evil that this was a quote-unquote real estate's a numbers business. And I hear that coming out of some of your mouths, and I think you guys realize just intuitively that that is just something that's just wrong. Like I said, it's evil. Yeah, I'm using the word evil, kind of a strong word, but there it is. Because when you have the mindset that this is just a numbers business and you forget really what being a realtor is all about, helping families, you know, if you lose sight of really what your true mission is to help people, then everything gets more complicated, honestly. So if you just are motivated, which I know very few of you are, but if you're just motivated by money, okay, here's a thought for you. If you have your mindset of service, if you're focusing every activity that you do, especially in your real estate business, on the dominant thought, how can I help you? How can I help this person solve a problem? How can I make this person's life easier? How can I actually make this you know, real estate buying or selling transaction something that is going to be an excellent experience for them where I'm going to save them money, save them hassle, save them stress? If that's your dominant thought, you're going to attract more clients and more money to you than you know what, you're, know what to do with. If you find yourself struggling, either now or ever, I bet you you're going to go back and you're going to remember what your thinking was. I bet you you had lost connection with the fact that we are in a people-helping business. And I would bet, venture a guess that you were focusing too much on this whole, again, evil idea that this is a numbers business and that's all that matters. Whenever you hear anyone say that real estate is a numbers business, and they're not, saying it, they're not saying it in the context of helping people, you've got to not walk, but you've got to run away from that person because they're going to infect your mindset. So the, what happens is, is when you're focused on helping people, when your truest intent is be of service to others, again, just driving this point home, you make more money, not less. You attract more people to you, not fewer. You find yourself inundated with opportunities, listing appointments, buyers coming out of the woodwork, because that... Uh, you are resonating with folks. They can tell, people can tell when you're sincerely trying to help them versus if you're just basically thinking of them as a number or thinking of them as a dollar sign. Can't you? I hope, I sincerely hope when you guys listen to the radio show that you can tell that Julie and I are really focused on every single word, every single thought was designed to help you guys, not just help you as an individual, obviously that's important, but we want to help you. We want to help the folks that you're doing business with. You know, if we educate you, motivate you guys, get you going down the right path, you're then going to do a better job for your clients. You're going to make more money. You're going to be able to do a better job for your family. And I don't know if you guys have ever, if you think this big, but the reality is once you become really successful at this or anything else in life, you have such an incredible impact. Again, not just on yourself, but your family, you know, your, your grandchildren, your grandchildren's grandchildren, 
all the different folks that you come in contact with that you've helped that have led your uh, that have led to you being successful and in many cases wealthy that comes from your mindset of service you see so it's not just that we're sharing with you some techniques to generate a listing lead okay that's that's kind of that's no big deal really at the end of the day but what we're doing is we're sharing with you primarily a mindset and how to be a responsible caring giving considerate business owner and by the way, when you have that mindset, you actually make a crap ton more money than if you're focusing on and having this mindset that it's just a numbers game, okay? So I just want to, you know, again, from hearing what you guys are parroting back to us that you really like about the radio show, you like about what we're saying, I know that that is one of the top things that I hear. So if you don't yet have that mindset of service, if you're sort of like hearing what I'm saying, maybe having these thoughts for the first time that, you know, I, maybe you don't think of real estate like that. Maybe you don't consider yourself that as a, a being a, a service person in essence. If you don't think of yourself as being someone here to help folks, if that isn't kind of where your mindset is, I bet you you're struggling in your business. I would pretty much guarantee you that you struggle in your business and you're making it too hard because you're not focusing on uh, the thoughts that create the energies that result in you being an attractor of people. You actually have become a detractor of people. People avoid you. So we're going to take a quick commercial break, and when we come back, I'm going to be sharing with you guys, let's see, one, two, three, four, five early warning signs. And what are early warning signs? Very simple. So in California, I use this as an example, there are earthquakes that happen all, all the time, small ones, big ones, you know, hopefully mostly tiny ones that are not even perceptible. There's seismographs, and there's these scientists that watch these uh, you know, machines that basically track the small movements on the, in the crust of the earth and lower down. California agents, you know what I'm talking about. So here's a thought for you. Is there a similar technology that we can strap to you that basically can look at your small movements and decide whether or not you're setting yourself up for some big earthquake? In other words, are there early warning signs like the seismologists look for when it comes to looking at their graphs and their computers? They know based on the uh, duration and the intensity of the little movements in the earth, they can pretty much get a, a really good idea of – if there's going to be a big earthquake, right? Well, I'm here to tell you that, like the seismologists, using those complicated machines, we can also do the same thing with you. And I'm going to share with you the five ways we can tell whether or not you're headed on the right path or the wrong path and what we call our early warning signs. So we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, five points and maybe two other bonus points if I have time, let's get ready to take great notes. According to the National Association of Realtors, only 10% of agents complete an amazing 90% of all transactions because they have a coach. If you want the production and performance that comes with being a top producer, then you need one too. Not just any coach, but the leaders in coaching today, Tim and Julie Harris. Don't just take our word for it. Listen to what HGTV star and Atlanta top producer Colette McDonald has to say. Hi, my name is Colette McDonald, and I'm with Remax in Atlanta, Georgia. I just wanted to take a moment and give a shout out to Tim and Julie Harris. I've been a coaching client of theirs for the last four years. When I first started in this business 12 years ago, I was very successful, did a great amount of business, averaged between 8 and $10 million a year. When I contracted with Tim and Julie to be my graduate-level coaches, my production increased by 20% per year. I am now trending 30 million this year. That's amazing results over four years of working with Tim and Julie Harris. I highly recommend them. Tiger Woods has a coach. And why does he have a coach? Because he can't see his swing. If you do what they tell you to, you will see huge results. I am living proof. Only Tim and Julie Harris provide powerful one-on-one -on -one coaching along with all the lead generation systems, scripts, presentations, team building, and business planning tools you need to dominate your real estate market. We offer affordable pricing with no long-term contracts, and our entire coaching staff are trained professional agents with top producing track records. Take action now and visit us online at freecoachingcallsforagents.com to schedule your free coaching call. There's no risk, no obligation, just a free, personal, one-on-one -on -one call with a trained professional coach. Join the elite 10% of agents who make all the difference in today's market. 
Visit FreeCoachingCallsForAgents.com to get started. Again, that's FreeCoachingCallsForAgents.com. So here's the thought. What if there were five ways that you could uh, tell what your future was holding for you? In other words, like the seismologist who's studying little movements in the earth, he can judge whether or not there's going to be a big earthquake, no earthquake, small earthquake. You guys get the idea. What if there were ways, what if there was a, a checklist almost that you could check yourself against on a regular basis to determine if you are building positive momentum or negative momentum, whether or not the next 60 to 90 days were going to hold great things for you in your business or whether or not they were going to result in a lot of struggle and pain. Well, I'm going to share with you the five top things that came to mind that I see as early warning signs with my personal coaching students. And so I want you to write these down. Now, I didn't do these in any particular order. Uh, but I did these as they popped into my mind first. Uh, I want you guys to remember, a lot of the coaching clients that I personally have had, I've had for years and years and years, like seven, eight years, ten years, and I've gotten to know a lot of these coaching students really well. I've gotten to know them to the point where I can hear in their voices tiny little inflections as to whether or not they're actually where they are mentally and emotionally in their business. I can tell whether or not they're kind of stretching the truth with me. I can tell whether or not they actually put forth the effort that they promised they would. So that type of relationship has led me to really be good at picking out the early warning signs. And these early warning signs are kind of universal. They happen to all of us. And most of these things, some of them just come on like a sudden earthquake, whereas others basically they creep up on you. And a good example is the first one I wrote down. So what I want you to do, is I want you to write down these five most common early warning signs, and I wrote down three bonus ones, assuming I have time. So I wrote down the five most common early warning signs, and again, the, point, the premise is you write these points down, and every single day, maybe post these by your desk. This is what I have my coaching clients typically do. They'll write down their personal early warning signs. They'll post them by the desk, and they'll ask themselves every single day whether they're starting to show any of these tiny little cracks in their surface, whether or not they're starting to – uh, make pro create problems for themselves, and if they are, well, they'll show up because they're violating or they're they're, they're demonstrating, if you will, one of these early warning signs. And, and I guess if I want to put this in financial context, because I, you know, we are real estate coaches here. Here's a thought for you: in the real estate business, you guys have to understand your contact to paycheck cycle, and it works like this: if you contact the seller today, how long does it take typically for you to get paid on that listing? Let's say you know you contact the seller. You pre-qualify the seller, you send the pre-listing pack, you go on the listing appointment, you take the listing, you know, okay, the whole process, right? This time of year, guys, it's going to be, even in a great, powerful, you know, ridiculously strong market, 90 to 120 days. For the most part, it's going to be six months. I want you to think about that for a second. So if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing today, and go back and listen to our past radio shows, or if you're one of our you know, thousands of coaching students, you guys can listen to the calls and the information and the training we give you on having daily minimum standards. But if you're not doing what you're supposed to do today, the three to five things we call our daily minimum standards, you're not hurting yourself today. I mean, hell, you might even not be hurting yourself tomorrow. You're hurting yourself 90 days from now. 180 days from now. I mean, when Julie and I, it's funny, you know, Julie and I do a lot of things, investing and this, that, and the other, and we always say that we're helping out future Tim and Julie, you know, because that's what we're doing. We're helping out future Tim and Julie. When we buy another rental property, we're helping out future Tim and Julie. Or when we reap the benefits of something that past Tim and Julie did, you know, six months from now, we say thanks past Tim and Julie. You guys kind of get it. We play around with this concept a lot because it really is true. So be really clear in your head that what you do today um, in your business, both positive and negative, won't necessarily affect you immediately, but there is an effect into the future. Okay, you guys get that concept. Early warning sign number one, very personal one, I realize for a lot of you, weight gain. A lot of you, statistically we know, that most of you are overweight. So how did that weight just appear on you? Did it appear on you overnight? Or was the accumulation of the weight gain? Did you just gain a little bit here and a little bit there, and you just came to accept it? You see? That is the type of insidious type thing that we all allow to happen to ourselves. Weight gain is a really silly example because it's so obvious. But there's other things that happen uh, that also slowly creep up on you and erode the very fabric of your life. And that happens again because we're not being very attentive to our early warning signs. So here's the question I have for all of you. I know most of you are going to make New Year's res resolutions in a matter of months. 
and say I'm going to lose whatever amount of weight, which is I've noticed typically 20 pounds that most people have to lose. And, you know, you're going to then make that resolution. How many years in a row have you made that resolution? So do yourself a favor. Hey, there it is. Do future you a favor. And why don't you start doing something about that now? Listen, guys, I've been there too. I was at one point 30 pounds overweight, and Julie was 20 pounds overweight. And we had let it creep up on us. We had basically fallen into bad habits. This is back when we sold real estate full-time in New Albany, Ohio. And we gained weight. And I know it can happen. It happened to us. You just sort of wake up one day, and you look in the mirror, and you say, Wow, that's not the person I want to be. And then you have to decide to make a change. Again, we're your business coaches, we're your real estate business coaches, but a lot of you need to consider hiring someone to help you get the weight off. You need to consider looking into a low-carb diet. You need to consider doing things like that to get your body back to the point where you know, you're being respectful of your body. You're not, you know, essentially you're not abusing your body because if you don't feel good, how are you ever expecting to get good results from, your, from yourself? Start small. Hire somebody, go to somebody, read some books. There's lots of, I mean, guys, come on. Weight loss has got to be the number one you know, topic of uh, books, of training videos, of everything ever, and it probably always will be. So absorb some of that information. What worked for Julie and I, just telling you, is we did a low-carb diet combined with moderate car, uh, cardio combined with uh, moderate weightlifting, and we lost all of our weight inside like 120 days. You can do the same exact thing. Don't wait to lose weight Don't wait for the problem to be really uh, huge. I'll give you an example. Coaching client. Um, This is this what I'm about to tell you happened before I was coaching him. He went to the doctor, and the doctor said, if you don't lose weight, and I'll even say his name, Monet, because what he did with this information was pretty incredible. The doctor said, if you don't lose weight, I'm going to have to start cutting off. There's a really good chance you're going to develop diabetes, and you're going to have to start, you know, fingers and toes and whatever else because of bad circulation. Well, not only did he lose weight, but he got in such good shape that he won some sort of national fitness award. He was featured in magazines. I mean, the guy looked incredible after he lost all the weight. Well, I'm so Monet told me this story, and so he and I are in this coaching relationship, and he started to slack off, not really doing what he promised he was going to do to be true to the goals that he set for himself. I asked him out of the blue, I said, Monet, are you still exercising? Have you gained weight? Bone went quiet. And then he said, I have. I've gained 10 pounds. And I said, well, do you think one thing has something to do with the other? And that type of behavior, again, guys, are early warning signs. It's not, it doesn't just generally just happen to you. It, it's something that you allow to happen because you're not being tentative to it. Point number two, not taking care of yourself, similar to point number one, not taking care of yourself uh, mentally, uh, spiritually, and, of course, physically. Uh, it's easy to go from one you know, normal red wine glass a night to two to three. It's easy to drink too much on the weekends, isn't it? It's easy to overindulge in foods that basically aren't good for your body. It's easy to do things that are, you know, you're not getting enough sleep. There have been so many books written, so many things about sleep in particular, and how it's really critical that you get, you know, I'll t- you know a lot of people brag about, it's, I don't know where this comes from, but a lot of people brag about, I only get four hours of sleep. Well, okay, here's my thing. I do good on eight hours of sleep. I even do better on ten. I mean, I need sleep. And so do you guys, too. So if you got into this habit of not allowing your body to, to regenerate itself through sleep, I mean, our little baby Zoe, she, only, she basically grows when she's sleeping. You know, you're the same way. It gives your body an opportunity to regenerate. So if you don't have the chutzpah, the energy that you want to have, you know, review point one and point two and really consider how you're treating your body. And again, I know what it's like. You go from one glass of wine, what's the big deal? And now you're on to three glasses of wine. And sure enough, the next day you don't have any energy enthusiasm. You don't have any real, you know, energy to go out and prospect or lead generate or even maybe even get up in the morning. Get the point? So early warning signs, are you an overindulging in anything? Are you monitoring what you're consuming? Are you exercising? Point number three. This is an interesting one. We're getting to more salient points. Your listing inventory is below X. Every one of our coaching students, once they basically build momentum, we require that they have a certain level, a certain number of listings at all times. For you, it might be three. For you, some of you might be five. For others of you, it might be 50. I have coaching students that have to have a minimum standard of 75 listings at all times. Why? Average sale price is low. And the days in the market is forever. But if you live in like New York City or if you live in certain parts of L.A., and you guys know we coach most of the top agents in those particular markets, and their average sale price is $2.5 million, if they have three to five listings at all times, they are having great months. Trust me when I tell you that. 
So depending on what your market is, depending on where you sell real estate, depending on ultimately on what your financial goals are, you need to maintain a certain number of listings at all times. That's really critical. Um, existing coaching students, what do you do? You go to your real estate treasure map and you actually complete it. That's part of level one. And you know what your minimum uh, number of listings is at all times. And if you need any help with that, request a free coaching call at freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Number four, okay, similar to number three again, you're not making enough contacts. In other words, you're not speaking to enough people every single day. As a rule, this will help you to put this into perspective, the number of listings that you have to have at all times to meet your financial goal, again, use your real estate treasure map, your business plan, should equate to at least the number of contacts you make a day. In other words, if you need 20 listings at all times, you have to make 20 contacts a day. If you need five, you need to make five. You need three, you need three. You get the idea. So every single day, remember I'm envisioning this for you guys. I'm hoping you're taking this seriously because it really will help to keep you on track so you can take care of the future you. You have your minimum daily standards on a piece of paper. It's posted right in front of your desk, maybe on your refrigerator, in your car, and you constantly are looking at it to ask yourself, am I breaking any of my minimum daily standards or am I, breaking, am I starting to exhibit any of these early warning signs would be a more concise way of describing it. So if you know you have to make 10 contacts a day, how many days has it been since you have made 10 contacts? What's stopping you from doing it? All the usual realtor excuses, you're too busy, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing the other thing. Really what's happening is you're just not clear in your head about the importance of making those contacts. You don't understand the ramifications of giving yourself a hall pass today and how much it hurts you tomorrow. Guys, I want you to really be clear about this. So it's what? September, what is the date today? September 17th, right? It's going to be Christmas in a matter of months. Do you have money set aside right now to make the holidays, doesn't matter what religion you are, the best possible experience for you and your family? Have you socked away enough money to spoil everyone you love? Have you done that? There's still time. You need to start thinking about the future you. Don't just be living month to month. Think about where you actually want to be 90 days, 120 days, six months from now. And remember the other thing. We've been really drilling down on you guys for at least a month on this. Your 2015 has already started. You have to start building your momentum now so that when you go into the year, you have the wind at your back opposed to the wind trying to push you back on your heels. Num point number five. Ah, doing well. Point number five. Again, you're not, when you make your contacts, you're making contacts just for the sake of making the contact. You're not making contacts with the intent of setting an appointment. And that is another cardinal sin that we see a lot of you doing. You're going through the motions, but you're not actually drilling down with the intent of setting an appointment. Does that make sense? All of you are guilty of that. So just admit it, accept it, and don't do it. The bottom line is, is when you make a contact, your whole goal is to set an appointment. Use our pre-qualification questions. Learn to be a great question asker. That's, all of our, that's what our scripts are. Now I'm going to give you guys the three bonus points. Again, you need to come up with your own early warning signs by thinking of some of my other coaching clients. And here's another one that is a really great early warning sign for a lot of you. Um, so I'm going to share with you guys uh, the biggest non-secret secret ever. News is garbage. 99.9% .9 of what you're going to watch in the news is absolute crap, and you shouldn't be watching it. 99.9% .9 of what you're going to read in normal newspapers and magazines, unless they're like Scientific America or really drill down magazines, is absolute crap. That's just a fact. That's the reason that so many of you guys, and me included, are so fascinated by you know, blog talk, radio station type things. It's because you're going directly to the people that are actually on the leading edge of what's happening societally and on the business front. All the other crap that you consume from normal media is just garbage designed to give you a little titill titillation, to get you, your mind going, to get you basically angry or sad or happy, trying to sell you crap. It is what it is. It wasn't that way when I was growing up. And I know many of you, it wasn't that way when you were growing up. When we were growing up, the news was something that you respected. Nowadays, it's just info, garbage, entertainment. So here's a thought for you. And uh, I'm thinking of a particular coaching student because this is kind of funny, Gary Z. okay? So great student, great guy to coach, really, really, you know, wonderful agent. I can tell by listening to his voice when I have my coaching calls with him whether or not he's been watching too much Fox News. Okay, I know it's funny to say, but it's true. Because he has this tendency 
to go all, you know, uh, prepper or off the deep end, you know what I'm saying? Store my canned goods, buy more ammo type thing. I mean, he's attracted to that, and a lot of us are after September 11th. I mean, there's just been a whole, it's like a hobby, you know, but it's an obsession for a lot of people. And so when he starts attra- listening to that, then he starts going to those websites, then he starts listening to all that garbage. That sucks the wind out of him. He doesn't have any motivation. His mind starts giving him excuses not to go and put himself in a position to be of service to others and help others. Remember what I talked about on the top of this call? So my suggestion to you, and Julie and I live by this as well, you should be completely media free. Oh my gosh, let me tell you, it's going to be hard when you first start doing it. But I'm talking about no CNN, no Fox News, no nothing. Cancel your local paper. Stop consuming any form of media. Cancel all of it. It's just crap. It does not help you. You do not, uh, it does not put you in a mindset to be of service to other people. Nothing that comes in any form of national, normal media nowadays is worth allowing into your brain. Do it, test it. Do it for just a week. Hell, just do it for a day. Completely and totally eliminate all forms of media. Have a media-free life. Now, listen, you can tune into, like, you know, obviously this is media, what you're consuming right now. And maybe you are, uh, there's certain videos you watch on YouTube, and maybe there's specific things like that. But what I'm saying is stay away from MSNBC. Stay away from CNN. Stay away from Fox. Stay away from the local papers. Stay away from the national papers. Stay away from all that partisan political bullshit that really has nothing at all to do with anything other than designed to basically get people to get aroused. It's supposed to invoke emotions. By the way, those emotions that they're trying to evoke are usually fear. When you feel fear, are you motivated to help other people? When you read about some boogeyman that's trying to get you, is it your mindset, the last thing it is, is trying to be of service to other people? You see how those thoughts move you away from being of service to other people and helping other people, oh, and by the way, making money. So do yourself a favor. Just test out this, you know, this lifestyle. Go completely media-free. Do it for a day. Do it for the rest of your life. Anything that happens in the news, someone's going to tell you about. Did you hear about so-and-so, whatnot, and Hoodleberry, whatever it is? If it's important, someone's going to tell you. Other than that, just get it out of your life. Okay, here's another bonus point for you guys. Two more bonus points. Um, A lot of you guys, and I hear this again on the free coaching calls, fortunately a lot of my uh, private coaching clients and our other coaching clients don't do this, um, looking for silver bullets. So many of you guys are looking for silver bullets. In other words, you're looking for the newest whiz-bang way to generate leads. It might be Facebook ads. It might be this. It might be that. It might be something else random. So many of you guys are constantly in a state of looking for whatever's new, Oh, I'll tell you right now, if I were to do a live conference, if I were to do Julie and I and uh, have all of our coaches, all of our staff, we do a live conference and we have a thousand people in the room. Wouldn't be hard to do because we have tens of thousands of you guys listening to this radio show every day. And I were to title the conference, Lead Generation Summit. There were to be standing room only in the room. Why? Because agents are addicted to the idea that generating leads have to be tied to some sort of BS gimmick. That's not the way it works. Existing coaching students, get into the material of Real Estate Coaching Essentials. You know exactly how to generate leads, which leads me to my next point. Buying business, buying leads in general. Uh, Yes, there is a point in everyone's career where it makes sense to add paid lead generation. I am certainly not going to deny that. We did that when we sold real estate. And, you know, frankly, some of the – but the problem with the paid lead generation, and I'm thinking of another coaching call I had today with a guy named Andre, great coaching student. He is honestly an absolute master at online lead generation, knows more about this stuff than even I do, and I know a lot about it. And the guy is a whiz. I mean, he just truly is. And he told me, he hired me as his personal coach about a year ago. He makes almost a half million dollars a year. So, you know, he's doing well. His lead generation stuff works. But here's the problem. He's spending $30,000, like $26,000 a month uh, on this lead generation to generate basically a half million dollars. So you guys can do the math. He's barely making any money. He was doing this before he hired me. Now what's happened is all this gimmicky online stuff that he was doing, including Zillow, uh, Zillow, including Zillow and Trulia, pay-per-click ads, Facebook ads, he's done it all. So he's done this stuff for so long that he knows how to do it better than anybody else. But the effectiveness of it is, is going in the crapper. So in other words, when he started doing, say for example, pay-per-click ads 10 years ago, on Google, they work great, but now they don't work so well because 
essentially other agents are doing it. So he is having to constantly live in fear of whatever little gimmicky thing that he's been doing, whether it will continue to work. And he hired me because he's sick and tired of having to chase the silver bullets. A lot of you guys are going to get to that point very soon because you've been addicted to these you know, lead generation ideas and this. you've been chasing the silver bullets and you're waking up in cold sweats and you're looking at your credit card balances and you're looking how much money you've wasted and you're asking yourself, there's got to be a different way. There's got to be a better way. And of course there is. There's the only way. There's the way that other agents have done it in the past that have been successful. When you listen to the superstar interviews that we do, when you listen to us interviewing literally our superstars who are the top agents in the country, no Mickey Mouse about that, the number one selling agents in the country, regardless of what company, the most income, the most revenue, the most units, the, you know, all that, okay? When you listen to what they're saying, you hear a very consistent messaging. You hear them saying the exact same things. Now, if I go interview a you know, middle-of-the-road agent, you're going to hear some of those things, but you're going to hear a lot of the silver bullet crap because they haven't figured it out yet. You know, guys, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, a smart man learns from his mistakes, and a brilliant man learns from the mistakes of others. Hiring a coach is all about learning from the mistakes of others and lessening the curve. Why do you have to struggle? Why do you have to hunt and peck? Why do you have to constantly be trying things? Why don't you just cut through that crap and just focus on what matters most, being of service to others? And oh, by the way, making a lot of money so you can take care of yourself and your family, not just your immediate family, but your legacy that you leave behind. That stuff matters. You have the opportunity to do that. You have the opportunity to change the trajectory of not just your life, but hundreds if not thousands of other lives that come after you or come, you know, you help a family, they have a great experience, you're able to get them to move to a different school district, all that good stuff that happens from that. You see what an incredible blessing being a realtor truly is? You see that? Do you guys understand how blessed we all are to have the opportunity to provide a service like this to so many people? So if you're not experiencing, if you, don't, if you don't feel that emotion, if you don't understand that, or if you're not benefiting from this new real estate boom, request a free coaching call, freecoachingcallsforagents.com, freecoachingcallsforagents.com. So guys, we have a lot of interviews coming up over the next few weeks. Make sure you tune in and listen. What's your homework from this and every other radio show? What is it? That's right. You have to share this radio show with as many other agents as possible. Help us get the word out about what this real estate industry truly is about, which is being of service to other people, taking care of yourself and taking care of your family. And guys, listen, you know, the bottom line is, is you only live once and you're dead a real long time. Make the most of this life. Embrace it for what a blessing it is. I'll talk with you on the radio tomorrow. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.